Hi, um, I'm Morgan Smith. I'm 23 and I'm from the United States. I'm a writer. I'm a creator. I try to get at the things that sit beneath the surface and then put words to them. I spend a lot of time in my head sitting with whatever I'm going through, um, whether it's uh, discomfort or excitement or any strong emotion, I like to understand exactly where that is coming from. And so I hope at least that I have a pretty deep understanding of what it is that I want in life and where I want to go. And I don't, I don't claim to know exactly what that's going to look like, but I know what I hope it will feel like. I've experienced a lot of destabilization um, not just personally, but also I think everyone of my generation, um, we grew up with one sort of idea of what the world was like and during COVID and a lot of the unrest in the United States and the increasing violence and wars around the world and stuff like that, I think um, a lot of those beliefs have been shattered and there isn't any kind of assumption of what the future is going to be like. I don't take anything for granted. Um, I don't think I know what my life is going to look like, and I don't think I know what the world is going to look like. Um, but all we can do is hope, and I think hope is a great replacement for entitlement. I don't feel entitled to any future, but I do hope for one. My feminism is something that I've had to come to from a lot of different directions. Um, the sort of question of like entitlement versus um, like what you feel entitled to versus what is thrust upon you. I think as a lot of women, um, especially young women experience, um, I felt very uncomfortable in my femininity, um, in, in my body and in the social constructs around it. And I am still working through all of that. Um, I think that as women, we are, we have a lot of things dropped on our laps um, and you have to choose what of that you really want to pick up and take as your own. As an artist and as someone who works in the world of like, <laughs> this is going to sound so like woo woo, but like essences and energies and stuff like that, I, I have been working to find not just what is different about feminine energy but what is really beautiful and unique and only accessible through that um for me feminism is going to be most important as applied specifically to what i do differently than anyone else in the world which is true for everybody for me feminism has looked a lot like not trying to put women and men on the same level or on the same playing field, but determining what is different about them and finding the beauty in that. Like if you look purely at, you know, biology, everybody loves to be like, well, there is a binary, it's biological. And that's not true. Like the things that we characterize as like secondary sex markers, which is everything from like levels of hormones to the way that certain genes express themselves and all of that, like, if you ask any biologist, there are thousands and thousands of different combinations of the way that X, this gene is expressed and that gene is expressed and the level of this and the level of that. And really, there isn't necessarily any more commonality between two people of this gender or sex than there are of this. Like, it's, it just doesn't really exist. Everybody is exactly their own person. And that's actually caused a lot of sort of complication for me in terms of the way that I approach feminism because, you know, f the, the concept of feminism is rooted in a binary. And I think that it's important to hold both of those things at the same time and say that while, like, while feminism can't exist without a binary because there has to be a, an, an us and a them or an other and the self, then you don't need to assume that everybody within that is the same. It's not like, you know, there's not two camps here. There's feminism and what it means to every single person, and every single person has feminine energy in them. 
there's people who were, you know, assigned female at birth and continue to identify that way. There's trans women, there's trans men, there's, you know, cis men who care for many young people and access very nurturing places inside of themselves. We all have a relationship with the historical concept of femininity. There is no simple answer to how we both promote the interests of women and the the rights and the um, you know hopes and dreams of women and break down the gender binary at the same time. While the gender binary is not something that I think is a useful construct for us anymore, there is also the question of reality. Like, there's there's my intellectual opinion on it and the intellectual opinion of everybody else on it, but there's also um, when you walk down the street, how do people see you? When you walk into a doctor's office, what rights and access do you have? When things happen in your life and you need to you know, seek a solution for them, what's gonna be available to you? And that's reality. We are creating the stories that we look to when we're building our feminism. If you want to remake an entire society, if you want to change the minds of eight billion people, it's not going to be through intellect alone. It's going to be through people's hearts and their imaginations and their hopes. I mean, if you think about like when you look back at your childhood and what was important to you, it was not what people were saying on the radio. It was not the speeches that you were heard in the background on the TV. It was the books that you read. It was the movies that you saw. It was the songs that you loved. And that is how a human mind is built. It's what you take into your heart and then eventually what you're able to put back out into the world.